Lamar. My release therapy is, is, is writing the music. I'm proud of y'all. I'm proud of the city of Compton. I'd rather talk about my reality. You know what I'm saying? I'd rather talk yeah. about something a little bit more deeper than that. The reasons and the problem and the solutions behind it. So, so when you hear these stories in Good Kid, Mad City, when you hear these stories in To Pimp a Butterfly, it's a little bit deeper than just the music. It's cats out here really trying to do something and really trying to spark the idea of uh, positivity in the community. How can I use my influence you know, with, with, with other cats coming into the city and, and me still being involved in, in the activities, you know, inside the streets? How can I influence that in a positive way? That's got to be great. That's great. Uh, inspire, you know, my mm -hmm. little brothers and sisters, inspire my little cousins, my city. Mm -hmm. um, it also make me more hungry, though. Really, though? Yeah. Why? Yeah, because it's, it's, it's a need to never be content mm -hmm. or to be comfortable. You know, you always want to continue to grow. So whatever that challenge is, I'm always looking for it. I could be proud and say, this is where I'm from. You know, I still believe in Compton. Compton always been the future for me. I think we breed some of the most incredible individuals, creators, intellectuals, uh, talent. We had it since day one. I've, that's why I always screamed this city. I've tried with the world. There's no place like this one right here. Kendrick Lamar is many things. Poet, writer, artist, wordsmith, local hero, community-driven, exceptional talent leader. However, for instance, hip-hop. Hip-hop has done more damage to black and brown people than, than racism in the last 10 years. These goofballs see an easy target. Uh, did you catch that? Uh, Lamar stated his views on police brutality with that line in the song, quote, and we hate the popo, -po, want to kill us in the street, fo show. KG. Ah, <laughs> oh, please. Ah, <laughs> oh, I don't like it. It is so wrong. It is so counterproductive. It gives exactly the wrong message. And use the Fox News empire to attack him whenever they can from media folks. Our culture has changed over the last, you know, 30 or 40 years and, 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 and the, there's been an attack on those, on, on those things in particular. And I just think that kids are exposed to all kinds of horrible stuff nowadays too. I look back and I think about the, you know, the horrible stuff that they hear when they listen to rap music, the video games that they watch from a really early age. To sitting politicians, it's safe to say he's taken a lot of heat in his career. On Kendrick's album, To Pimp a Butterfly, considered by some to be his best album, he suffered the wrath of many for his creative expressions, musical integrity, and storytelling. The album's seventh song is All Right, a powerful protest track that Lamar said lyrically was inspired by a trip to South Africa's Robben Island, where Nelson Mandela sat in prison in a cell. From Complex, since its release in 2015 on To Pimp a Butterfly, All Right has been widely accepted as one of this generation's most important protest anthems. It's a symbol of hope. It's difficult to pinpoint the exact moment the song was first used in a protest setting, but many trace it back to July 2015 as news of Sandra Bland's death while in police custody spread and protests ensued. Now to the latest on Sandra Bland, the woman who was found dead in a Texas jail cell three days after being arrested during a traffic stop. Police have released new video from outside her cell around the time she died as her family awaits the results of that private autopsy. All Right was later played during the Million Man March for Racial Equality, a movement for Black Lives Conference at Cleveland State University. Trump protest rallies and countless Black Lives Matter events across the country. Dr. Noriko Manabe, seen here is an associate professor of music theory in the Department of Music Studies, and she would earn an outstanding publication award from the Society for Music Theory for her article, We Gonna Be All Right? The Ambiguities of Kendrick Lamar's Protest Album, which was published in Music Theory Online in 2019. She'd say there are lots of hands that become involved in the making of All Right between Pharrell Williams, Kendrick Lamar, Soundwave, and all the people who are involved in the video. Then the journalists chime in, 
and the protesters make it into a protest track. It shows how a sonic creation can never be wholly owned by the creator. It becomes what the public makes it out to be. Per scholar, researcher, policy advocate, activist, author, professor, former chairman of Howard University's Department of Political Science and current director of the International Affairs Program, Clarence Lusane would write, black music has been shaped by the material conditions of black life. Contextually, today's black youth culture flows out of the changes that affected the political economy of U.S. capitalism over the last two decades. Reverend DePayne Middleton, doctor, would tell NPR of Kendrick and the song. He's not denying that we're in a protracted state of trauma. He's saying, I know that we may have all of these things around us that will allow us to escape, but the movement is still there. The fight is still there. And I think it's important to recognize that because sometimes we don't think about the psychological impact and trauma of fighting for your life every single day. In addition to the lyricism, Lamar's music video has been studied and analyzed by some of the finest in their respective fields, showing the complexities, the hardships, the beauty, the pain, and the reality. And yet, through everything you just heard, these powerful messages have been misconstrued. A local town is set to pay out $100,000 to settle a lawsuit that, per the Connecticut Insider, stems from claims the son of a police officer suffered emotional distress and claims his parents were forced to pay tuition costs to move the child to another school after the student's 8th grade class was shown the music video to All Right. The teacher showed songs that shook America, a riveting series involving the Roots frontman Black Thought, goaded, and drummer Questlove outlining various ballads that made their impact all right was featured. Eric Bender, the writer who broke the story for CT Insider, wrote in his piece, the lawsuit claims the teacher knew that one of his students was the son of a cop and had an individualized education plan and a diagnosed learning disorder. It also argues that the video depicted officers as murderers and contained other shockingly violent scenes and controversial statements about police officers. Per Patch.com, the case dates back to 2020 when the Vernon Center middle school teacher received a written reprimand after a complaint was filed by the student's parent. Two years later, the lawsuit was filed because the son of the officer watched this music video. He suffered emotional and psychological injuries and distress. That's per the suit. PTSD was mentioned. Depression, shock, anxiety, confusion, feeling unsafe, sadness, and social withdrawal were also listed. Noah McGee of The Root would add, the teacher who showed the documentary was reprimanded at the time after parents said the content in the doc was inappropriate. This is the same teacher who was also reprimanded in 2004 for showing excerpts from the documentary Fahrenheit 9-11 and then reprimanded again in 2006. So before we get into it, if you can, please go to youtube.com slash TYT Sports, our homepage, and become a channel member to keep us afloat and or go to tyt.com slash join. You could also follow me on my socials, Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok. This is layered, but what it shows at the same time is narrow vision and a misunderstanding. Because as I outlined in this piece, and as we put together for you, there are so many factors that go into why this is not just a brilliant song, but a brilliant music video as well. And as someone who grew up with a learning disability, I can relate to how hard some things are when it comes to schooling. What I cannot relate to is an openness, is a lack of an openness to simply learn and adapt. And yes, there is clearly a bias in the home of back the blue, protect the shield at all costs, cry a foul when anyone goes against. It's quite clear. But for a school district to not have their teachers back 
in their teachings that they believe is best for their class and to have the dialogue to explain their positions. I'm dumbfounded. I really, really am. This is one of the most brilliant songs in hip hop history. One of them. I didn't say the, I said one of them. And to see how it flies over the head of so many, and it results in a small town having to pay six figures because of it, it seems like pure and utter hogwash to me. But hey, that's just my opinion. Let me know yours in the comments. Thank you for watching. Have a great day. want to enter into a contract with him after this. I wouldn't be surprised if everybody just drops him cold. Hogan says he is resigning from the WWE while the WWE saying Hogan was fired. And he would suffer the consequences. What we saw in that tape is exactly what 21st century racism looks like. You may like black people and be friendly to black children, but you don't want your child to marry a black person. And yet, shockingly. When Hogan used the N-word during a 2012 radio broadcast, he explained that a black wrestler, Booker T, called him the word during a match. And they're all talking trash. <laughs> Booker T goes, I'm coming for you, Hogan, you <laughs> it wasn't his first time. Additionally, via billboard, citing the tape leak, he used the N-word again and called The Rock the S-word. There would be more. You and Hulk were once good friends. Yeah. What's the likelihood of that ever being repaired? Never. You might recognize this guy. It's former wrestler Jesse the Body Ventura, who would go on to become the governor of Minnesota. Long and short, Hogan did Ventura dirty. And uh, he's the one that ratted me to Vince when I tried to unionize. I found that out under federal deposition when Vince was put under sword, and he didn't hesitate at all. I told my lawyer the story, and in deposition you can ask about anything. And so I wanted to know who ratted me in the locker room because there were no agents, no one from the office was in there when I did it. So it had to be one of the boys. And when my attorney said, is there, Mr. McMahon, has there ever been a union in wrestling? And Vince said, no. He said, has anyone ever tried to? And Vince said, well, I think Jesse Ventura spouted his mouth off about it once or once before. And my attorney said, did you hear Mr. Ventura? No. Well, then how do you know he did? With no hesitation, Vince went, Hulk Hogan told me. And I didn't show any emotion, but I almost tipped over in the chair because he was my friend. Hulk Hogan would fight unionization in the WWE, sucking up to Vince McMahon. To reiterate, under oath, Ventura's lawyer asked how Vince learned of the wrestler's plan to unionize. McMahon, without hesitation, I reiterate, under oath, said it was Hulk, who screwed over his own teammates and ratted them out. So that's pretty rough. And then when COVID hit, Hulk Hogan would put out this, and a caption on Instagram. Word up, can you handle the truth, my brother? Just like he, capital H, did with the plagues of Egypt, God has taken away everything we worship. Maybe we don't need a vaccine. Maybe we need to take this time of isolation from the distractions of the world and have a personal revival where we focus on the only, all caps, thing in the world that really matters, Jesus. God has taken away everything we worship. God said, you want to worship athletes, I will shut down the stadiums. You want to worship musicians, I will shut down civic centers. You want to worship actors, I will shut down theaters. You want to worship money, I will shut down the economy and collapse the stock market. You don't want to go to church and worship me, capital M. I will make it where you can't go to church. Now we have another interesting nugget to add to Hulk Hogan's legacy. What do I mean by that? Matt Bender, let's start here, a contributor to the Majority Report and a journalist for Mashable, brought up something very peculiar, and it was Hogan's tweets. Let's get into it. Bender wrote, Hulk Hogan's social media accounts and website promoted a Hulk crypto token jumping on the recent celeb meme coin trend. It pumped big millions of dollars and then dumped all the posts that are now deleted. 
There's a new post claiming those previous ones were not him. From the Hogan Twitter account read this message. Website HulkHogan.com is updated with the Hulk info. I'm all jacked up for tonight. HH. Another read, can't stop, won't stop, brother. HH. It had the whole crypto token note as well. However, as Binder alluded to, Hulk said, not so fast, my friends. In an Instagram post, he wrote, hello, family. Appreciate your love and support always. Please do not take notice of any posts posted today. They are not from me and will be promptly removed. Thank you, Hulk. There were signs that something was off with Hulk, for example. This tweet included a video of Hogan seemingly endorsing the meme coin to prove it was legit, but the video is actually from a December 2023 video promoting a karaoke night and makes zero actual references to crypto. ITR Wrestling made note that the promotion of the Hulk coin led to a quick surge in its market value with the token reaching a peak market value of $18.8 million shortly after the launch. However, within just 20 minutes, the market cap plummeted to $2 million and has not recovered from that level currently. It has been speculated that Hogan's social media account was hacked and used to promote the cryptocurrency. For what it's worth, via Indy 100, a meme coin is a type of crypto named after characters, individuals, animals, artwork, or anything else that can be mimicked. Most are supported by online traders and followers and are generally intended to be lighthearted and fun, but they can be highly risky and hold little to no lasting value. Instead of deleting the Hulk crypto-related tweets, Hogan decided to nuke his entire account, wrote Cage Side Seats. Adding more, the Crypto Basic wrote, amid the chaos, Bubble Maps data revealed that an insider had purchased 15% of Hulk's supply prior to Hogan's tweets. A report pointed out the insider implicated in the crash realized a massive 812 fold return from trading Hulk and from Mashable. Celebrity meme coins have been on the rise recently. The likes of Caitlyn Jenner, failed the gubernatorial candidate. The rapper Trippy Red have both recently launched their own tokens, while Australian rapper Iggy Azalea's mother token has continued to rise in value as she is constantly posting about it over and over again. It is worth noting, notes Mashable, like much of the crypto space, these tokens are incredibly volatile. Many have risen in value when they're first posted, only to lose value at an even faster rate when the celeb in question stops posting or a new token pops up and everyone's attention in the space goes to a different place as well. Lastly, from Bitcoinist, savvy crypto enthusiasts were smelling a scam from the get-go here. Incriminating evidence surfaced, recycled videos from December promoting a karaoke event, the lack of endorsement on other platforms linked to Hogan. This wasn't a strategic body slam. It was a pile driver onto investor trust. Here's what I'll say. We don't know yet. And we don't know if there was any involvement of simply anybody in Hulk Circle or if it is just simply scammers somehow getting into Hulk's, only his Twitter, which I do believe is a red flag as well, and then posting about it. So when more information comes in, we will keep you abreast. On another note, what I will say is this. I have never seen more BS than the NFT space, the crypto space. These were, the NFTs, when they came about, everybody remembers the buzz. They were selling for so much money. And I remember the viral clip of Paris Hilton being hosted on Jimmy Fallon's show where they forcibly talked about this. And the audience reaction was just mute because no one not only even understood it, but then it was very clear the silent message from the crowd that came across was, who cares about this stuff? 
It has clearly led to more losses than wins, though the wins at the beginning were extraordinary. Yet here is where we are today. Celebrities, athletes, what have you, allegedly getting hacked and scammers making a ton of money. It is a damn shame, but when we have updates, we will keep you all posted. Hollywood icon Robert De Niro has publicly despised Donald Trump for a very, very, very long time now, and it appears like he's not giving up his grudge anytime soon. As he recently sat down with MSNBC anchor Stephanie Rule to vent his newest frustrations with Trump and the current state of the country. He's, a re- he's sick. He is really, genuinely a sick person that somehow has been allowed into our system. And I'm not calling him, I'm tired of calling him names. He just can't be anywhere near the office of the presidency. While it's great to hear someone with as much fame as De Niro hit Trump like this, it's really not a mystery why Trump rose to power like De Niro suggested. A solid chunk of American voters saw parts of themselves in him. Whether it be his out and about bigotry or his posturing as a law and order candidate, it's indisputable that a ton of voters then and now just like the guy for everything he has and represents. Combine that with Trump's phony populism and you got a recipe for what ending democracy could look like. There's nothing about him, there's not one redeeming thing in him that I can see ever, ever. The guy's a monster, it's beyond wrong. It's almost like he wants to do the most horrible things that he can think of in order to get a rise out of us. I don't know what it is. De Niro is again missing the forest for the trees. While Trump and his supporters love owning the libs and trolling by any means necessary. We like to troll. We like to go the night before one of their primaries. We just... We do a little trolling. It's called we do a little trolling. This attitude is exactly what our political and economic systems cultivate. With how things currently stand, our politicians have no incentives to work for their voters when the real power brokers are the lobbyists and ultra-wealthy donors. And given the hyper-partisanship present at all levels of government, it's no wonder that we're seeing much more political theater than what we've become accustomed to. I use figuratively when I say punch him in the face. Go at him. A bully you punch in the face. The trouble with Trump is he's not just a bully. He's a stupid bully. That he is, as we mentioned previously. De Niro's been sounding the alarm on Trump for years now. Do you have that fear as well, that he I, wouldn't he, leave? Yeah, he'll say it's rigged or this or that. He'll find some, this guy has done everything possible. Much worse than I ever thought, ever. For perspective, De Niro gave this interview a whole year before the 2020 election, and to his credit, he called Trump's shot perfectly. This guy is should not be president, period. And when you say that, folks on Fox come after you. I remember the Tonys when he got up there and cursed. A lot of Fuck criticism em. of you. Fuck him. Okay, well, you know, this is cable, Sorry. so it's not an FCC violation, Sorry. but it is still a Sunday morning. Well, I we're, do wonder we're why you choose of, to go that let way. Let me say something. Why do you we choose are to go in a, that we way? We are at a moment in our life, in this country, where this guy is like a gangster. He's come along and he's said things, done things we say over and over again. This is terrible. This, we're in a terrible situation. We're in a terrible situation, and this guy just keeps going on and on and on without being stopped. It's sad and disheartening to see the same sentiment ring just as true today as it did back then, which only further reinforces the idea that there are a ton of voters who genuinely like Trump and all the baggage that comes with him. He, he's a wannabe gangster, and he uh, the, the thing is that he makes gangsters look bad because certain gangsters, like in any profession, keep their word. He doesn't even know how to keep his word. Hmm. And he's the president. It's just crazy that he's our president. I get the sense from you that you view this as a crisis. It is a crisis. While De Niro is worthy and deserving of criticism, it's still a net positive that he's willing to be so unapologetically outspoken about the dangers that Trump poses to all of us. If there are any stories we missed, if there are any that you, the viewer, would like to submit, get at me and follow me on Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, DMs are open, support the channel. All of our content is free. It's the least you could do. Become a paid channel member and or go to tyt.com slash join to support the network as a whole. Thank you so much. Have a great day.